It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. And man, ACDC wanted that song to end quick. <laughs> That's the quickest fade I've ever heard. Right. <laughs> Back in black. I just realized for the one billionth time, there's never a moment when that song doesn't work for me. Good morning. It is Thursday, July the 20th. How many people live in America now? 350 million, roughly? Mm, so roughly. So that means 349,999,999 of us woke up today pissed off, but there's one new guy with a billion-dollar Powerball oh, ticket. Billion. Guy or gal, I should yeah. say. We don't know who won the Powerball last night, but somebody in Los Angeles, right there in downtown L.A. at the Las Palmitas Mini Market, won their mm. billion-dollar Powerball jackpot. Yeah. Um, Good for them. Lump mm -hmm. sum payment, which I would assume the person's going to take, is $516 million. Then you pay, take out the taxes. Roughly, uh, when you look at a Powerball, just remember, you're going to go home with about a third of it. So yeah. this is over $300 million cash after taxes in someone's bank account. And the first thing I saw when I looked at the news and saw that somebody had won the Powerball, and then I look on Twitter and I see all of these tweets about Powerball. It's trending, so that's where I click non-stop people questioning the veracity, saying the last time the Powerball was over a billion, it was also someone in California. Yeah. What's going on here? Oh, no, no. The fix is in, it's, man. It's, let's see, there are more people in that state than any other. What? That's true. <laughs> it's the most populated state by a pretty large degree. So you're saying odds play a part in this It's somehow. just one of those things. I more see. people buying more tickets. Ah. It's hardly a surprise that the second billion dollar <laughs> Powerball in the last year, yeah. uh, both in Southern California, uh, and and then I and I saw two things that jumped out at me. One, those a series of those tweets, all kinds of people immediately going tinfoil hat. Oh my God, the Powerball's rigged. The other one I saw, one player did post his ticket. He bought five tickets. He bought five Powerballs. And he selected his own numbers. And the five actual numbers he chose for his Powerballs, those are the five numbers that hit on one ticket. Oh, and then gosh. he always plays number 24 as his Powerball, Powerball, pow the actual Powerball oh. number because he's a Kobe Bryant fan. And he said, if I had just taken my Powerball numbers and made one ticket of them with 24 as my Powerball, which he would have done. Well, I, That's his billion dollars. And oh I'm like, God, if those are your up. numbers and you play them, you gotta, if you have five numbers you always play plus the 24, uh -huh. then always buy at least one ticket with yeah. those five. Yes, Don't just make always. them your Powerballs. Next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He's got, he'll be there, he'll be there, what, Saturday night trying it yeah. again. Maybe I'll get the same numbers again. This will be amazing. That's I wonder if the same numbers have ever won you know, a Powerball more than once. I, mean, I can't it's imagine. It's got to be astronomical. That's right? too it much. Just, just couldn't happen. He's got to come up with new numbers. But yeah, you wouldn't want more. Yeah, now that would make me sick to my stomach. Mm -hmm. What pisses me off about it is I ended up trying to track down some DEF. I won't get into it. But uh, at convenience stores yesterday, I'll buy a Powerball and I have to stop and get this for the truck. Right. Oh, they don't have it. I'll go to, so, oh, I forgot. Second convenience store. I'll get it there. Oh, they still don't have that. Oh, and I forgot the Powerball. I went to three convenience stores and did not buy it. What's wrong with me? I, I know I'm, you would have won. I'm too dim-witted to actually even play the Powerball, let alone win the damn thing. Oh, baby. Well, you know, listen. God. We, we all make mistakes along the way. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, I did see, actually, I, I remember in the 90s reading about somebody who had won a lotto in Georgia, like the just the Georgia State Lottery. They won a few million dollars, and they said, well, what I always do is I put my, my age, my wife's age, the age we both were when we met, and then whatever the fifth, no, I don't remember what it was. And I looked at that, and I was like, oh, I should go get a ticket and do that. And this is a true story. And and like the, that weekend, the winning numbers were would have been that formula for me. Well, I, no. I, I kid you not. I cl oh I had gosh. the yeah. and I cut I had the page of the newspaper that showed that. And for a little while, I hung on to it to just say, "Can you believe that uh, if yeah. I had just?" Uh, and then I realized, like, there's no reason to. Uh, this is a dumb thing. I, I'm letting everyone know how stupid I am. <laughs> I it's like it's 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 the, it's the conspiracy people that yeah. get on Twitter. Hey man, there's something rigged here. Two straight big jackpots mm -hmm. in California. Hold on, <laughs> I smell a rat. Never ever ever underestimate how dumb a guy can be. 
be when he feels like someone just got something got taken from him. <laughs> yeah, right. Or something didn't go according to plan. I, now, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we, we all, <laughs> and, and, and on that regard, I mean, listen, I, I'll just come right out and say it. Men are so much dumber than women. I mean, if you don't already know that, come on. But just on a practical level, there are things that I hear men say on a regular basis where I go, you know, a woman would at least ha maybe think that, but know not to say it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I just, in, in a lot of situations. And and I'm reading, there's an article where a delivery, a nurse at a maternity ward just posted all of the dumb things she has heard men say in the <laughs> delivery room uh -oh. to nice. prove a point. And I mean, it's kind of astounding. Now, yeah. Fun fact, uh, when, when, uh, when my wife and I, when I say and I, when my wife uh, delivered our first baby, our baby boy, and I was there going, okay, breathe, it's okay, you know, for hours and hours and hours, I had one big gaff, And it was, oh, 24 hours into labor, uh, I nodded off. I, oh, I, I literally was sitting in the room. Mm. She's going right through it. It's, we are, we are coming up on, do we need to... Make right. do we need to have an emergency C section? Like there was baby monitors and the heartbeat was slowing. I mean, it was a little scary for a minute. And at that particular moment, that's when I just finally crashed for all of thirty seconds. But when my wife looked over in the midst of uh, her arduous journey and saw me like this, <laughs> yeah. uh, boy, was I <laughs> awakened by a jolt! Yeah. And then I was right back in. Okay, sorry, yeah, right. I can't believe that happened. Uh, and I've heard about it since, honestly. <laughs> it, it's come up a couple times. But I didn't say anything stupid. Right. I, my body just shut down on me. Um, here, But that reminds me, because on the list of dumb things men have said, he, this is the one that jumped out at me. I think you should probably just get a C-section. This is taking too long. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought it, and we ended up getting one. Uh, okay, but, but but you didn't say it out loud. I have no way. And you didn't you didn't frame it with, this is taking too long because I have plans, is what that's basically mm. saying. I didn't think this would still be happening here. Man, if there's ever a moment to keep your mouth shut, guys, it's from the minute that water breaks until yeah. that baby is born. Yeah. You are just doing what you're told if you know what's good for you. I didn't make noise with my mouth after 21 <laughs> hours of delivery, yeah. after 21 hours, and I had the horrible contractions and the whole thing. I had the audacity to uh, go down to the snack machine and get some Doritos, a little bag of snack oh, bag after 21 hours. Yeah. And I went back in there and I... I opened it up before I went in the room, and as she's sitting there, you know, uh -huh. going through her contraction, just suffering like hell, I reach into the bag, you know, like you'd play that old operation game when we were a kid. Yeah, trying yeah, not yeah, to touch yeah. The Remove sides. funny bone. I know, but the bag crinkled, and the oh. look, and I had to set them down and just look at the Doritos. <laughs> I was looking at the monitor because I had to tell her when the yeah. contraction was coming. She had to know that, oh, it's, it's about to come. Bear down. I, and uh, But I was really looking at the bag of Doritos. And then the second big faux pas was uh, she caught me watching David Letterman. Of course, the sound was down. Wow. But my gaze was sure. yeah, at oh. the TV. I don't remember who the guest was. But, oh. yeah, but not, uh, not like this one. Uh, Cassie said, my husband talked with the nurse about if he should sign up for the Taco Bell's $10 unlimited taco <laughs> deal. That's oh, where you okay. get the free taco a day for a month while they were holding her legs. Oh, no well, way. Let's make it small talk. He did sign up, and yes, it was a Tuesday. No, we did not name our kids Supreme. Holy God, we're dumb. Oh, uh, man. Gosh, we're dumb. Um, how about this one? Uh, a man said to his wife when she requested an epidural, are you sure you want one? My mom didn't have one. Oh, no, Before no, Before no. we do this, oh, we should talk about it. Yeah, why don't you just oh, no. go ahead and I, get in your casket now, sir? I, I, I can only hear that with an Italian accent. You know how the Italians are about mom. <laughs> yeah. Holy crap. Candace, do we already have a phone call? <laughs> BJ from Rosemont. Good morning. What's happening out Wait, there in what? Rosemont? Morning. How you doing? All good, sir. What have you got for us? So in, uh, my wife was delivering... Uh, about 20 minutes, probably, you know, they can't eat or anything. She just had to eat ice chips. Uh-huh. The whole time, I went out and uh, got a bunch of, there's some special on McDonald's. They're doing uh, <laughs> 10 cheeseburgers for $10. Yeah, boy. I went, I, I went and bought them and <laughs> brought, brought them back while she was delivering. She was so mad. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, you're I can see it in the parking lot there, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you wipe the, uh, all the crumbs off your mouth, so she. 
Yeah. <laughs> how uh, how long how long was that one thrown around uh, the old family story time? Or, or I guess we're still talking about it. Uh, we still talk about it here and there, but it, it was it went around for a while. Sure, it did. Mm. Everything good? Everything good these days? We're 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 calm and we're happy though. Yes, sir. Very good. <laughs> I, love, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. I listen to you guys every morning on my way to work. Oh, uh, well, thank you very much, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank like you, that. EJ. See, I was going to make a BJ and the Bear reference. Anyone else going to get that? I didn't think BJ would. <laughs> he sounded too young. <laughs> How's the bear doing? What's this idiot talking about? Uh, and, then, and then by the time you explain that the bear is a monkey, then we're completely confused. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what, what? Man, the 70s were wild. Yeah, man, they were, weren't they? Men saying dumb things in the delivery room. Should we keep it in the mm. delivery room this morning? Let's do that. I, I, if we if we open it up beyond that, we'll never get we'll You're never right. we'll never be finished. Right, exactly. The show be, it'll be a marathon. All right. Men saying dumb things, doing dumb things in the delivery room. Let's hear them this morning. Maple Grove, lock and safe, talk and text, 651-989-ROCK. Head over to the KQRS Facebook page. Mike Evans coming at 630. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Thursday, July the 20th. We are discussing really stupid things that men have said in delivery rooms, and we're going to get back to that. I uh, believe we have a few people on hold. Hang on. We'll get to you soon enough. But right now, it's time to check in with the man who I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to violate his trust and announce that he is the winner of yesterday's $1 billion Powerball from Southern <laughs> California. Mike Evans with the Hollywood Report. Boy, I wish you were right, you know. Man, me too. You'd throw me a couple mil, wouldn't you? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Thank you, brother. Hey, uh, we start off with a little quick love nugget. Despite friends denying rumors that Harry and Meghan may be separating, I hear it's just a matter of time. They sure can't it hide is. it forever. Yeah. We'll see. She, he, they, they, I think they both sold each other a, a bag of crap. There you go. Uh, Oppenheimer opens today. It certainly will not match Barbie's box office. Oh. Uh, and these movies are as different as night and day. Sure. But for me, if you're going to see one, uh, I, I say see Oppenheimer is the one to see. Mike. Open Sesame, Oppenheimer. Uh, director Christopher Nolan has outdone himself, and the acting is fabulous, uh, starting with Killian Murphy, who will undoubtedly get an Oscar nomination, as will Robert Downey Jr. and Emily Blunt. Uh, Blunt. Also, uh, Matt da Damon is really good in this. If you feel all the tension sure. and a personal connection to the story while, uh, while understanding the importance, fear, and resolve to execute this project they're working on, uh, every process of making the atom bomb is explained by, admittedly, often very confusing. Uh, Murphy's character complicated but committed to his research, which he believes his bomb will save lives and maybe the world. Uh, the movie is a masterpiece that intertwines history with the unknown and showing human frailty in the process. It's rated R, three hours, a little long. Whew. Four stars. Fair enough, man. Evans with calling a calling a grand slam on Oppenheimer. I like. Him. By the way, you know it's an interesting sidebar. Oppenheimer and the movie Barbie. Both of those movies cost exactly a hundred million dollars to make. Really? Isn't that an odd twist? That, that, that's that's pretty strange. Um, I think you're right. Though. I think Barbie's going to recoup quicker, but uh, but Oppenheimer's probably going to be the one that that picks up all the awards. Now, I thought about you when I, when I saw this nugget. Hollywood strike <laughs> shenanigans. Oh, I, the fact that I'm your <laughs> shenanigans go-to, is that's, mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's really means a lot. It's warming. So here's the deal. Several hundred strikers are picketing at Universal Studios, and during the night, Universal bigwigs cut back all the trees uh, that the strikers were marching under, <laughs> and the weather forecast for the strikers today is no shade now and 92 degrees. Sunblock. Yeah. What the heck? Yeah, lotion up. Yeah, because uh, the, the, the execs, the guys running, the calling the shots at the studios, they were already getting so much good press, they figured, <laughs> let's yeah. go ahead and trim all the shade away from our striking writers. Oh, yeah, there no you evil. go. Golly, man, the, the, the douche bag is open <laughs> and dumping more douches out of the bag at all times. <laughs> Unbelievable. One more striker <laughs> note. Uh, Mandy Moore, who uh, starred in This Is Us television show, uh, brought a residual check with her yesterday. It was for one penny. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, she said she gets a lot of checks. That this was certainly one of the small, the smallest. But she also said she's striking in in, in behalf of the writers because uh, nobody ever gets really paid what they're supposed to get paid. Yeah, it's it's very true. I've gotten uh, I've gotten checks from uh, uh, old old telecasts of things I played on as a member of the Black Crows, and I've got I've got a series of checks for under one dollar, and yeah. I, they just come in, and I'm like. The, the printing the check and mailing the check costs at least a dollar. What are you doing? <laughs> exactly. Just just combine them every ten years. Send me a check for seven dollars and make it worth your while. Uh, Johnny Depp follow up. Depp has canceled his Hollywood Vampire concerts uh, for the media for the immediate future. Anyway, I, I think it's because of that bad leg injury I told you about yesterday. Wow. And more follow-up while Joe Manganello said that uh, it was Sophie Vergara's hard partying that caused their divorce. Amazingly, Sophia Vergara yesterday blamed Joe's sobriety. <laughs> I've I love never her. heard that before. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, I it it's God bless her. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> Maybe she should, start, she should start dating Hunter Biden. What do you think of that? Wow, that's a leap. Well, yeah. just, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I don't think addiction's ever something to joke about. But a, but a woman who just can't stand someone else's sobriety uh, at the end of the day, that's just kind of funny. Mm -hmm. It's a bit bizarre. It is bizarre. Yeah. Uh, hey, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll see you. Right on. Thanks, Mike Evans. Or. Maybe we should start calling him Mike Evans, oh, as long as he insists Lord. on calling Oppenheimer Oppenheimer. Hey, he's, he's in the hard vowel situation. Mike yeah. Evans. Mike Evans. He's just sticking with it, right, all the way to the end. And you know, uh, being in the position that he is, he must have watched the trailer. He must have watched the interview. But anyway. Now, once it's once that right. once that water is running downhill, mm. it's not going to stop. That's our Mikey. That's a, <laughs> it. Certainly is. Uh, I I want to. We should start laying odds on the number of Meghan and Harry comments. I, I bet we go three months before he doesn't mention them. Yeah, no matter right. what happens. Oh, that's uh, it's people talk about it. My daughter brought it up to me yesterday. Yeah, we we're just in there. So what do you think? I'm like, don't. Don't. You know, uh, Rosemary's been on the. Uh, she's she's been on this story for, for from the day one. Yeah. She's like, I I. She didn't know who Meghan Markle was when the thing started, and there was that interview at some point when Meghan Markle said, "I really didn't know anything about the royal family. I'd never. I I didn't know who he was when we first met. And when my wife heard that right away, she's like, No. I don't yeah. believe it. Mm -hmm. That is nonsense. She's been, she's not a royalist by any means, but she was just like, no, this whole thing is bull. Right. Don't say that. Oh, you didn't know who he was. He's one of the most famous people on the planet. Mm -hmm. So I have to talk her off the ledge regularly. We don't care. <laughs> we don't know these people. We will. She goes, I know. Yeah. Why does it bother me? I'm like, I don't know, but it just does. Yeah, I know. They, I suppose the royal family really relies on that. That just that. That's um, exactly what. Pathological interest. That's human it. beings on this planet. Maybe just in England and the United States, but yeah. I, I think probably Europe too. Just this pathological interest in these uh, damn. I got I got sucked Dummies. into the crown. I love the early seasons yeah. of the crown. The once once it hit the nineties, I was like, I don't care. But boy, I love going back to the forties and fifties with those weirdos. Yeah. yeah. I love uh the season with um Helen Bonham Carter as yeah. Princess Margaret. You know what I love about Helen and Bonham Carter? Anything she's in. Yeah, yeah no I kidding. Yeah, I would that's... think she'd do a great Margaret too. You know, just knowing that, you know, her acting strengths and Margaret being who she was, I haven't seen The Crown. You know, oh, that's, that's fantastic. That's what, Season one will it'll it'll knock you down. I don't know where everybody gets all this time to watch so much TV. I got to quit watching crap like, oh, I don't know. Fred Couples hit lob shots for an hour and a half. Well, hey, <laughs> hey, here's a tip: if you want to catch up, maybe don't spend six months of the year skiing thirteen uh, hours a day. What isn't it time for sports history? I maybe <laughs> maybe Candace, do we have a call or not? Yeah, let's do oh. a quick call. Doug from Blaine. Doug, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, gang. Hey, this is a story. <laughs> 39 years ago, my firstborn, my wife wasn't feeling well. We went to the hospital, and I didn't know this, my first one. The cord was wrapped around the baby's neck. Uh-oh. So they had to do an emergency C-section. Yep. All right. Well, all of a sudden, there's all these people doing things to my wife that I'm going, oh, my God, what is going on here? Yeah. We went into the room, and they were 
they had her belly exposed and the surgeon was there and he had a scalpel and, and they were just waiting for the juice to take effect. And the doctor was trying to kind of calm me down and he says, well, you know, this is your first one. It's special. Is there anything I can do to make this day any, you know, better? And I said, well, it is my wife's birthday today and it'd be nice if it'd be a little girl. He literally held up the scalpel and said, I can take care of that. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh no. Dark oh, humor. Nice chat. By the way, can we get the kid out? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's hilarious. That was, that was the last thing my wife heard. Oh, no. Under. Oh, that's rough. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> you high five the doc? Yeah, I don't know. Did, I let me ask you this. Did he remove the cigar from his mouth before he said that? Hey. <laughs> Old school. Hey, but he's doing good, but it was it was just one yeah. of them things. That's yeah. a stressful That's time. Hey, uh, Doug, thank you for the call, brother. We appreciate you holding on for us. That's a great story. Thanks. All right, thanks. Bye. Yeah, it's a cigar. I'm picturing like <laughs> Ellen King. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's incredible. <laughs> uh, yeah, hey, listen, we, we'd be happy to hear more of your stories. Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk text line six five one nine eight nine Rock. Let us know. Uh, of all the inane things you or you heard someone else say, men, men only. We're looking for stupid things men said in the, in, at the moment of truth in the delivery room. But before anything else, it's time to look back. How about a history lesson? Did you know this? Hey, did you know this? Okay. This is interesting. This is interesting. What is it? A tale of two home runs on July 20th. The first... Let's go back to 1962. A rookie pitcher for the San Francisco Giants named Gaylord Perry is is taking batting practice. He's a pitcher, and he's getting some good wood. And a beat writer for the San Francisco Chronicle says to the Giants manager, hey, that Perry kid's going to hit some home runs for you. And the manager said, and this was printed in the San Francisco Chronicle in 1962, there will be a man on the moon before Gaylord Harry Perry hits a home run. <laughs> Go forward seven years. Gaylord Perry has been at bat more than 400 times without a home run. And on July 20th, no. 1969, no, no. the very day that Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, <laughs> Gaylord Perry hit the only home run of his career up to that point. Oh, the same day the he greatest, went yard. That's the greatest sports story I think I've ever heard in my He life. went on to hit five more. He <laughs> retired with six home runs, but his first home run came the day Neil Armstrong walked on the moon, seven years after his manager said, there'll be a man on the moon before this kid like hits a home run. Your, that's like babe calling his shot Seven almost. years in advance. <laughs> yeah. Even better. On, in 1976 on this day, Hank Aaron hit his final home run, 755 a very unceremonious moment in front of 10,000 fans in Milwaukee. It was uh, his last season. He was the designated hitter. He did not get much done. He only played 23 more games, 10 home runs in his final season. He was 42 years old, doing yeah. the best he can. But the uh, streak ended on this day. A groundskeeper for the Brewers caught the ball, oh. held on to it for 23 years, and sold it in the 90s for $650,000. boy. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, July the 20th. Woo! Candace's <laughs> favorite day of the year. I guess. <laughs> Always. Tell them why, Candace. Why is 720 so important to you? It's important to me because tomorrow is Friday, and then this weekend is just going to be a Banging, man. I got a jam-packed weekend. Wow, that's great news, Candace. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. That's wonderful. Boat cruise tomorrow with all my favorite people. Oh man, I thought you were I thought you were excited cuz the Matildas just beat Ireland one nothing in the Women's World Cup. I guess Woo! that was just me. That was this morning, wasn't it? Go Australia. What? No, that was New Zealand earlier. Oh. Now Australia just came in. New Zealand, the Kiwis and the Matildas with big wins today. There's your Women's World Cup update. Well, you have to uh some people might be taping that, man. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> the British Open started already, I see, today, too. Woo! Or as they call it, the Open. Oh, uh, it's just the Open. Back in Liverpool. Really? In yeah, Liverpool? Last, last time it was in Liverpool, uh, Tiger Woods, I think 2006, won it. 
And uh, the time before that, it was there in 1967, and I believe John Lennon won it then. Yeah, pretty much whatever he wanted to win. Hey, real quick, and we've got a couple of callers who've been very patient, and I appreciate that. We're going to get to you. Um, I'm going to drop a big name here, Ringo Starr, buddy of mine. I met Ringo, and then we got to hang out a few times over the years, and he's a wonderful guy, and he really does talk like that. And <laughs> we were chatting once, and I said, man, 1966, at the height of Beatlemania, like Revolver is coming out. You've got Revolver in the can. You're getting ready to do your final U.S. tour. The entire world is swiveling on Beatles time. And then England wins its only ever World Cup in England. What was that like? And he goes... I didn't pay any attention. I don't care about football. He was like, <laughs> I go, wait, wait. But then, like, Liverpool was the dominant club in the world. England wins the World Cup. It's the Beatles universe. It's swing in London. And he goes, no, we were the Beatles. We didn't pay attention to that. <laughs> I was like, man, that must have been great. They, they had their own didn't, world. Didn't their care at all. Their own world and space they lived in. Still do, I guess. And uh, by the way, there's nothing weirder than someone saying we when talking about the Beatles. Because right. there's only two people on the planet that can do it. And one of them said that to me. And I was like, he said we. Oh, my God. That guy, he's still that same guy that was that guy back then. Holy crap! I know it. Anyway, that's my good. That's that's my name drop. I'll drop Ringo anytime I can. But hey. more importantly, we have been discussing, uh, oddly enough, really stupid things men have said in the delivery room. Just imagine the the number of women whose eyes just rolled into the back of their head. Oh my God! Do I dare call <laughs> and share what my do husband it. said? Um, but we didn't get to Tony Lee, who is a father of at uh, least two yeah. people that we know of. <laughs> That's right. Tony, <laughs> Tony, you mad, you mad, uh, mad, uh, whatever, mad, mad hatter, you. Was there any <laughs> any stories you can share, or were you just, as I would expect, calm as a cucumber? No, well, Rachel was very enlightened at the time. Remember, she was like, she wanted a, a snack. She wanted something to eat, and I went down. There's a vending machine in the hospital, of course. And like a dummy, I kept going back to her going like, well, they have Snickers. They have Cheetos. <laughs> that, she's like, just take a picture of the vending machine, yeah, right, and yeah. I will choose from there. And I thought that was one of the most brilliant things I'd ever <laughs> yeah. encountered in my life. At the, at the ultimate moment of truth, mm -hmm. she's still just right. dancing circles around I you. did think of, though, there was a Bobcat Goldthwait had this line, though, when he's in the delivery room when I was in the same position, you know, holding a leg, yeah. assisting, and then after when, when he, he said, would you like to cut the cord? And Bobcat had said, isn't there somebody more qualified? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I remember I felt the same way. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but it was so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. That's uh, I I, yeah. I, t I I can go right back to that that we had we had high intense drama for baby number one and then baby number two our daughter was breached so it was a scheduled C section by necessity it was yeah. no different than going and get it was like well I say this to me it was like I got to get a tooth removed I mean it was like scheduled planned no rush a right. week before the due date it was as calm as something like that can be except for as they started the procedure. And then one of the nurses standing at the table said, oh, wait, this baby's breech. And I went, right. what? what? Right. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that? And the two nurses uh, uh, helping the, uh, the doctor immediately walked out of the room. And then the door opened and two different nurses came in because there's different protocols. And so you have different people on. A call. Thankfully, there was two other nurses right there, like <laughs> in the dugout. Yeah. They came right in. Everything was fine. But that moment of, oh, wait, this baby's breech. And I was like, you guys didn't get the memo? Oh, man. We've yeah. known this for weeks. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, the breach team was ready yeah, to go. Yeah, the breach team was ready to go. They brought in breach team SWAT A1, and uh, everything was all good. <laughs> Candace, let's go to the phones. Who is on hold? Andrea from Lester Prairie. Andrea, good morning. Good morning. So I was in labor and hard contractions had just started and my husband at the time was wearing just a plain gray Hanes shirt. And I remember I reached over and I grabbed onto the collar of his shirt and I was like, ouch. And he's like, hey, don't wreck my shirt. Oh, <laughs> oh. Uh -huh. I'm it like, does stretch plain the neck. gray shirt. I will buy you a new one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, keywords at the time. When uh -huh. you said my husband at the exactly. time, <laughs> wow! Exactly, man. I uh, did. Please tell me you just went ahead and ripped that bad boy right off his body, and just to prove I, a point. I really wanted to. Yes, <laughs> you could have. You could have very easily. I should have. Oh uh, well. <laughs> everybody's healthy. Everything came out okay, though. Absolutely. Great. 
Beautiful. Well, um, uh, well done uh, maintaining some level of calm. You, you, you were right. He was wrong. Make no mistake about that. Thank you very much. You got I'll it. Thanks you. for the call, Andrea. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, don't grab my shirt. Yeah, you don't want to stretch out my Hanes T-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> it comes in it comes in threes, I believe. The only so. thing worse than that is if he followed it up with, but but Kim gave it to me, like oh, his girl, his yeah. last girl. You oh, imagine? This is Kim's shirt. Jump out the window, brother. Oh man, oh. no kidding. Well, before we get to our next call, how about this one? Uh, Nina says my husband asked if he could turn the TV up. He couldn't hear over my moaning. Oh, come oh, on. Yeah. You dink. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Whoo, baby. Well, you just reproduced with one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly yeah. right. We, uh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. What is wrong with us? Do we have another call, Candace? Lori from Montrose. <laughs> I love this. Lori, good morning. Good morning. So, baby number two. Yeah. Um, Went a little went a little haywire on us. Um, everything was going fine until the heart rate went down. They ended up putting my head down, my feet up, and started pushing the baby back up. Oh, what? what? Huh? What? Never heard because of that one. The, because the cord was ahead of the was around the head. Okay. So he was starting to crown, and he was cutting off his his blood supply. So they had to rush me to the ER. But Whew. yep, they had me feet up. And a nurse was pushing the baby back up. Okay. Wow. wow. That sounds like something a, a dad would do that he didn't know any better, but yeah. Well, but bless you, darling. That must have been. Kind of sat, yeah, my husband sat in the corner in absolute dumb belief, and I think yeah. they, he almost fainted. So they had a nurse on him as well. But no, everything came out fine. He was fine, but that was very bizarre and very scary. That certainly was. Well, you sound great. Uh, I'm glad to hear everything came out fine. That's a. Uh, yeah, I've never heard of that one. Thank you for sharing that, Lori. See, <laughs> See ya. It's ladies' night yeah. today, <laughs> this morning. Please continue to call in 651-989-ROCK. These are fantastic. Tony, do we have some text messages? Boy, do we ever. In the middle of a big push, my husband put his finger to his mouth and shushed me. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. The doctor said to him, no, let it go. It's in your best interest. <laughs> oh, oh my God, wait a minute. Oh what on goodness. earth? Can you believe that? What sort of childhood trauma did he suffer yeah. to think that made any sense at all? Uh-huh. Gosh, oh, my you know, there. word. I blame it on the women. What are you procreating with these guys for? Um, That's completely insane. I don't more. know if we're going to... You got another one? Yeah, it says, during delivery, my husband was bidding on the prices right. I still hate that show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Can you imagine? Yeah. Uh, okay, I think I see. We're starting to crown. Okay, I need you to take a deep breath. <laughs> 339 three, 340 340 it's a weed eater for god's sakes it's power it's cordless oh my god what are they going to come up with next honey are you seeing this uh, how about denise and my husband's very limited defense he grew up on a farm however when i was in labor with our first baby the nurse asked if he thought he was going to be okay he said yeah i'll be fine i've seen lots of pigs being born Oh, my god. Oh, well, god. Once you've, I'll tell you, once you've seen some stuff on the farm, I, uh, our first baby went C-section. Both did, but like you said, the second one we knew was going to be C-section. Yeah. It was just like, all right, bing, bang, boom, yep. we're out of here. Yeah. Uh, but the first one, all sorts of drama. You don't know it's 21. She's not di- 21 hours, not dilating, but they're massive contractions. We're going to have to go C-section. C-section, oh, my God. And so I grew up on a farm. I've seen things. They go in there, and they, they put the curtain up, and there's the big belly, yeah. and then they cut the belly, and they're using, like, a giant shoehorn, and her back's coming up off the table. Oh, and, and she can't see any of this because they have a curtain, and I'm looking at her. She's like, what? I'm like, I have nothing. They're yeah. tearing your body in half. I'm looking inside your body. Yeah. And they take, you know, the yeah. uterus. They just make a little cut. It's like one inch. They say it's kind of like ribbed like a beehive. So then our little obstetrician, this uh, little gal that's standing on a step stool to do this, just reaches in and tears it. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I, I, I stayed behind the curtain. Yeah. S- same thing. Really long labor, emergency yeah. C-section. It got, got real dicey real quick for a minute. All was well. In the in the long run, hard, a difficult recovery. That's called getting hit by a truck after you've been hit by a truck. Damn. <laughs> uh, but that's how that goes. Do we have another call, Candace? Jill from Minneapolis. Jill, good morning. Oh, Jill. Is she in labor Jill. now? Uh oh. Maybe she went through a tunnel. Breathe, Jill. Oh, no. 
just <laughs> well, could a joke at a time like get, this? Get her back and hang on. We've got a yeah. run along here. We're talking about stupid things that guys do or say in the delivery room this morning. There is the KQRS Facebook post. Let's get you on the line this morning. It's Maple Grove Lock and Save Talk and text 651-989-ROCK. I think we might have to get into this Revenge of the Nerds story. We're all familiar with the movies Revenge of the Nerds. Uh, the nerds really got down with a little revenge here in the last couple of days. We have a story about that coming at 7.30. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show, 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show for Thursday, July the 20th. We have opened a can of worms this morning <laughs> on the old morning show because we said, hey, any of you ladies ever hear anything stupid in the delivery room from the men in your life? And the answer was yes. Yes, they have. We've even had a couple of men call in to say, oops, I probably shouldn't have done or said this. The delivery room, the, the ultimate moment of truth, <laughs> like, like real life moment, as in new life moment. And boy, are men dumb. Just as thick <laughs> as bricks sometimes. Uh, there was an article, a nurse uh, shared a million things she's heard. Just as an example, uh, a man said, how long is this going to take? I do have plans this weekend. And he was not trying to be funny. <laughs> this is just an example. But the best examples, of course, are coming from our listeners themselves. And oh my word, have the phone lines lit up. Nothing better than uh, exposing just how dumb men can be. Mm -hmm. Candace, who do we have on hold right now? I just want to say this is my favorite day. And I'm uh, sure it is. I saw her <laughs> message to us. Uh, women, three women on a hold that want to talk about how dumb men are. I'm yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> well, the, that's three at, as of this moment. That's yeah. all we can hold. There's going to be more, I'm sure. Candace, who's number one? Jill from Minneapolis. Jill, good morning. Good morning. Um, so my son, I, when I was expecting my son, he came a month early. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we got to the hospital... They had to put me on antibiotics for 12 hours, and um, I could tell my, my then husband was not very happy about that. Um, when it was time to give birth to my son, the Vikings game came on, and he looked at me and said, can we hurry this up? The Vikings are on. Oh, come on. The Vikings. I, I am not kidding. And to make matters worse, um, my son had to be rushed to the NICU, and he was watching the Vikings, and I said, can you just go with him? Um, so he went to the NICU and came back right away and said, this was the worst night of my life. I need to go home, take a shower, and feed the cats. I'll see you later. And um, that's why he's my ex. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, no. Good move. yeah, again, the key word, then husband. Yeah. How many marriages have the Vikings ruined? Um, yeah, that's just the thing. I mean, my God. Uh, oh, Jill, bless your heart. But yeah. uh, but but everything's okay? Your son is healthy these days? My son is 15 years old. He's playing football. He's amazing. And awesome. for him, I do it all over again. That's, yeah. that's beautiful. That's and uh, thank you for sharing that story. I'm glad we can laugh about it now, but we would have fully understood if a right cross had been thrown at the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Awesome, yeah. Joe. Thank you. Hope she got a little more than half out of that divorce. How about Debbie emailing KQ Morning Show at 92kqrs.com? Yeah. Husband asked the nurse to turn down the heart monitor that was wrapped around my stomach, monitoring the baby's heartbeat uh, because it was making him sick to his stomach. Oh, could man. You, I, could you turn dear. down the baby's heart monitor, please? I'm, it's making I, me a little <laughs> nauseous. What? Uh, wait till you see the next part that's coming up, Yeah, buddy. no kidding. <laughs> you want nausea? I'll give you some nausea, buddy. Yeah. Oh, my God. There's just, there's nothing, there's nothing more special than the, the complete dumb yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. of, of the men in the world mm -hmm. at the moment of truth. Candace, who else is on the call? Artie from Egan. Artie, good morning. Good morning. What do you got for us? Well, uh, I go along with uh, a lot of the other callers. This is uh, used to be husband. Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm on the third child, the first two. I, and this is the last one because I pre-knew that. This is it. And I had had no pain medication with the other two. Okay. Not that I, I was just going to do it. And so this third one was the largest of the children. And he was uh, had big head, and it's uh, a lot more pain. 
Some pain medication. <laughs> he, he looked. He looked at the nurse and with his eyes covered, of course. And he said, "Give this woman anything she wants." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was that. Well played, Artie. Good job. Uh, he was. He wasn't asking for it. He was begging for it. I thank you for the call. Uh, yeah, yeah, cheers. Thank you. I do remember, what do they call them? I always want to say because my first car was a Pontiac Le Mans. What uh-huh. are they, Le classes? Le Mans or Le Mans? Le Mans. Yeah, Le Mans. Right. <laughs> Le Mans classes. And uh, one of them was in there saying, oh, yeah, we're going to give a childbirth naturally. And the instructor said, well, you know what? At some point, she's going to try and resist that. At some point, she may you know, falter a little bit when the pain's really kicking in. And that's where you've got to get in there and support her. I'm sitting there next to him thinking... Dude, you are going to get your head taken off if she wants pain medication. And you're like, now we decided. Remember, you know, at that the, you've lost the battle when she asks. I, you I, give I have right a. There. I, I I know of a story of a couple that uh, at the at the the the. The mom in hard labor said, "Okay, I can't take it anymore. I'm exhausted. This yeah. is killing me. I want an epidural." And her husband looked at her, and he's, that's exactly what he said. He goes, "No, no, no. This was important to you." <laughs> and she said, "I don't care. I feel like I'm I'm being ripped in half." And yeah. he goes, "No, no. We we talked about this, and you decided, and I supported that decision. We're not going to go back." And we and he overruled it, and she did deliver. Au naturel, and uh, boy, never happy about it. Never really got over it. That was the first of the few steps that led to the end of that relationship. They won the battle, lost yeah, the war. Guy, nothing like a guy deciding his opinion matters at all when it really doesn't. Tony, yeah. we have another text message? Uh, yeah, continuing with partners in the rear view, my ex, dumbass, it says, with our second child. <laughs> so he's been there before. Needed the nurse to tend to him because he was going to pass out, head between his knees, breathing into a paper oh, bag. Good luck. Oh, my baby. God. The French <laughs> pronunciation, Dumas. Yes. Dumas. <laughs> oh, my Lord. I cannot begin to. Yeah, it's nothing dear. better. Yeah. We should just have dumb dude Thursdays from <laughs> now on. These are yeah. great. Candace, who else is on the call? Marla from Apple Valley. Marla, good morning. Good morning. What do you got for us? Well, I have two beautiful daughters now with a uh, actually very awesome dad and husband. Wonderful. But on my very first one, I had been in labor for over 30 hours, oh. and we ended up going in to have a C-section, and my husband bent down and whispered in my ear, my feet hurt. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, well, wait, that's, was this a, that's where you grab his nuts and you squeeze right there. Now, how do your feet feel? My feet well, hurt. With my second one, um, and she was almost nine pounds. Um, he was down there, and he came up and he whispered in my ear again, and he goes, "You pooped on the table." <laughs> and now then he proceeded to take my baby after she came out. And took her out to meet the families before I ever got to see her. Oh, geez. Oh, wow. No, no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Give me whoa. that. Yeah. I get, you know, these are all examples of things you just can't imagine having to discuss ahead of time. But I guess, you know, the, you, uh, wow. Uh, Marla, you sound like a woman who's not serving life in prison right now. So congrats on your restraint. <laughs> Yeah, he's pretty awesome. Okay, he's, we've all we've all had our moments of weakness, I guess, and 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 yeah, some. Yeah, but I don't let him forget it. No, of course not. And uh, you know, if you want, uh, we'll call him at work right now and let him know that we all know now too. What the hell? Thanks for the call, Marla. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's that's incredible. Mm. I tell you what, after all those other things we've heard, I, taking the baby out to meet family members before the mom gets mm, the baby. I, I, know. I mean, I Boy. hope that's one of those things where he's still sitting there shaking his yeah. head going, I mean, because you can't defend it. No, that that is one of those, like, what 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 
things happened in my life that led me to a place where that yeah. made sense to me to well, do. Uh-huh. You, Look, gotta, you pooped all over the table, darling. You had something to clean up. <laughs> I thought I'd just run the baby out quick and say, look oh, what we did. Incredible. Candace, who else have we got? Buck from South St. Paul. Buck, good morning. Morning. How are you doing today? Oh, great on this end. What have you got for us, brother? So my brother, uh, when, when his then wife was having his daughter... She had to have an episiotomy okay. because that that's a cut. When they cut it, sure. they mm-hmm. don't tear. Yep. And when the doctor, it was a female doctor, was stitching her back up. Oh, no. The brother said, can you put in a few extra stitches? Uh, no, and, no. And the doctor looked at him and said, it's not her fault you have such a small penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Points for the doc. Yeah. So good. I love that. Oh my word! Yep. And you that did. That was the best. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. there's, there's, uh, and, and you know, I, I would even give your brother the benefit of the doubt that he thought that would be received as a joke, you know. But it's like, why, yeah. why does that moment need a joke? <laughs> why, yeah. why? Oh, uh, that's incredible, Buck. Thank you for the call, man. We appreciate it. Yeah. Have a great day. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, there's Jen that along those same lines. But different? Does it really hurt that bad, her husband said? I mean, it's a tiny baby. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that, I know. That's, we don't... that's a, that, my, my first thought is that, that there should be a, we should put a racquetball in the, man, in the hole in that man's penis and see yeah. how that feels. <laughs> that's, just my, that's just where my brain immediately went. That blue racquetball. Oh. Does this hurt? It's a small little ball. You can squeeze it in your hand. <laughs> Go figure. Hey, uh, this is important, and I would, hate, I, would, I would feel remiss if I did not mention that the 92 KQRS Rock the Boat 80s party, oh, yeah, it's sold out. That's right. The only way on that boat is to be one of the four of us or already have your tickets or you could still win tickets. You got to keep listening for your chance. That's tomorrow night, Friday, July 21st. As Candace already mentioned, the weekend is going to happen and it's going to happen on a boat and we can't wait. Paddleford River Boats, we're going to launch from Harriet Island in downtown St. Paul for a night of drinks, free food, Lucky's 13 Pub, providing the grub, live music from Rough House. It's going to be awesome. And again, stay tuned because there will be a moment uh, where you will have a chance to win some tickets. Candace, I believe we have one more call right now. Yeah, let's do it. Colby from New Hope. Colby, good morning. Good morning. What do you got for us? Well, it was me. I'm that guy. That <laughs> yes. I have, when my first first child was born, my son, I'm happy as heck, go out and I tell my parents in the waiting room, I got my boy. I come back in room and I walked through the door and the first thing out of my mouth was God it smells like fish in here oh good call Colby mm. it, it didn't go over so well no <laughs> no that, you know what it's odd that one never ever there's not a scenario where it goes over well if there's a woman nope. in the room to see yeah, right. I don't suggest it to anybody yeah right <laughs> that's a that's a rough one. That's a rough one. Hey, but you live to tell the tale, so there's, there's, you get points for that one. I bet he has a scar from it. Yeah, I bet he does. Thank you for sharing that with us, Colby. We appreciate it. Um, by the way, another reminder of a moment in a delivery room, and I am not making this up. A grandmother, first time seeing the baby, literally said, God, the baby looks like Hitler. That's a true story. Okay. I know the family that that happened. Oh, yes. Where'd the baby get the tiny little mustache? I, 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 it was it was one of those. Who knows where yeah. that came from? All right. But uh, you want to talk about just bringing a room to a crashing silence? Yeah. Wow. Mazel to- oh, yeah. No, uh, uh, we're not. <laughs> Dumbasses in the delivery room this yeah, morning. Really? Uh, let's Man. keep the party rolling here at eight o'clock. Give us a call, please. This is fun for us. Six five one. Nine eight nine rock. That's the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line. We have a KQRS Facebook post up as well. Dumbasses in the delivery room. What did he say? What did he do? Guys, confess it and hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. Ninety two KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It is Thursday, July the 20th. Good morning. Throughout the morning so far, in case you're just joining us, we've been discussing 
Well, just how stupid men are, especially when the moment of truth arrives and babies are being born. Men in delivery rooms have got a bad track record. A lot of dumb things said and done, and we've had a lot of people calling in and giving us some incredible examples of the malfeasance of men, if yeah. you will. And I'm sure we'll get back to some of those calls and comments <laughs> and texts and Facebook posts. But uh, it is Thursday, July 20th, and there is one incredibly wealthy, most likely, most uh, assuredly, as long as they know where their ticket is, Powerball winner. Last night, the Powerball for $1 billion, a winning ticket, just one ticket, is going to collect all the moolah sold in Southern California, Las Palmitas Mini Market in downtown Los Angeles, it looks like a little hole in the wall, a closet convenience store. Somebody bought the ticket. The Powerball numbers 7, 10, 11, 13, and 24. The Powerball also number 24. If those are your lucky numbers, why didn't you use them for a Powerball ticket yesterday? A billion bucks. Uh, by the time it's all said and done, after you take the lump sum payout, after you pay taxes, you're walking with about a third of the advertised dollar amount. So someone's going to leave with about 330 to $350 million in cash. That is, assuming they still have the ticket and they remember to sign it and cash in. Oh, I'm so happy for them. I hope it's someone deserving. You know, well, I, I know a lot of people in Southern California, and I'm just hoping it's <laughs> one of those people. And I'm hoping that they think of me fondly. Yeah, right. With their $330 million. Now, doesn't right. the convenience store, they get some sort of kickback on that, big, right? They big, do? Six big. figures at least, yeah. So not, I was just wondering if I won the $516 million payout on that. You know how you tip on pull tabs? Oh, look at that. I got a of course. $500 winner. Here's, you know, give whatever. Give them a little taste. Yeah, give them a little taste. I don't know. I mean, if they already get a big chunk. Well, you, the, well, the owner, a, a the owner of the one. store gets a chunk. The clerk yeah. who sold it to you doesn't necessarily get a chunk. You're right. I would go back and give them yeah. a brand new crisp $10 bill. I wouldn't. I would have an attorney <laughs> go back. I yeah, wouldn't want right. anyone to know who actually won right. the thing. No, Although I've kidding. often wondered this. Let's say this billion dollar Powerball ticket is not claimed. For a month or two months or three months. Let's say it's getting close to a year. Mm -hmm. Chances are that Mini Mart has a security camera and they can always determine when the ticket was sold. They could theoretically scroll back and find that person. Right? Do they not get their piece of the pie if the person doesn't cash I, in the I, ticket, I, right? I, I don't know how that works, but I'm just thinking if a billion dollars is not being claimed... Couldn't they conceivably go back and find to the exact second and, and have footage of a person buying a ticket and then say, hey, is this you? You got the billion-dollar ticket. Would they do that? Wouldn't they? And now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm thinking probably not a good idea because, my God, can you imagine? How many times have we all bought a Powerball ticket and then you never think to check or you don't even know where you put it? Mm -hmm. You put it away. Can you imagine somebody seeing themselves in the LA Times or on the news like, hey, that's me. Wait, I had the billion dollar ticket and then nine right. months later they're they're digging holes in the backyard wondering where they put that ticket. Oh, oh my what a horrible gosh. feeling. That would be the worst thing. That'd be wor that'd be oh, that would be the worst yeah. thing ever. It can't be that much tape because didn't they have a drawing on Monday night? I'm not Powerball savvy, but I thought the last one was on or am I thinking Monday? Monday. Yeah. So they Monday do it. They and do then it Monday Monday night. And so you only got to watch about forty eight hours a video there on the security well cam. i would i would think that the powerball they know exactly where it was sold yeah. and i'm saying i bet they know the minute it was so they, oh, they sure. probably know the time so they yeah. can immediately say go check your cameras mm -hmm. for 9 17 a.m on this day uh we'll see but you know what this is the kind of thing you talk about when you didn't win and you sit around going i can't believe i wasted nine dollars on three powerball tickets and i didn't even get that far and i feel like an idiot like i said i'm too dim-witted to even play the game let alone uh, win it because I made a stop three times, which sounds it, it's not an ordinary day for me to stop at a convenience store three times. But I was you know, looking for that additive for my my diesel truck, and oh, they didn't have it; they were sold out. And every time I stopped, I kept going, "Oh, don't don't forget get your Powerball yep. tickets." And I forgot all three times. I'm One track mind. One yeah, track mind. It, right. Just a dumb guy. Just a dumb guy, <laughs> not in a delivery room. That's though, okay. It's probably yeah, no kidding. Um, it's probably for the best because you know the the number of big. 
Powerball, the big lotto winners who then their lives are ruined. I mean, yeah, it's a heavy, sure. it's a healthy percentage. A lot of uh, reckless spending, a lot of not yeah. understanding how money works, and then also a lot of scams. People fall for scams. You can't blow through $300 million. There's no way you can go broke no, but, on No, but professionals million. can. <laughs> they, <laughs> yeah, you might not be able to, but there's someone who knows how yeah. to make sure that you do. Um, can you? And speaking of scammers, this is a pretty good one. Uh, an elderly now it's terrible. It's an elderly woman was taken yeah. advantage of. But at some point, you realize, well, if you're if you're elderly, you should be more wise. A woman named Esperanza got a phone call. This is in Spain. A true story. She got a phone call from a man claiming to be. Wait for it. God. <laughs> Oh, are you being serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, this is very true. This man called this woman. A man called a woman repeatedly over several years and said he was God. And he said, I would like you to take some of your savings and deposit them at my church of heaven. Sure. Yeah. And she said, what do you mean? He goes, no, the ch you need to put your savings in my church of heaven. It offers better interest <laughs> than any earthly investment. Uh, the woman never suspected she was being scammed. She no. really did believe she yeah. was the chosen one yeah. for the Lord himself. Uh, six years of this, over six years, she followed God's instructions. She would put money in a small drawer at a local convenience store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, total all after six years, three hundred thousand euros. Yeah, that's about four hundred thousand dollars. I like uh, God taking the pauper route. You know, you know, like kind of like the Jesuits or whatever. He doesn't need a lot of convenience store, a simple phone call. I don't know what his phone plan would be. If he goes with their Verizon, T-Mobile, maybe. It's, uh, I would come up on caller ID you know when what? God calls. Yeah, this poor <laughs> pathetic woman. I'll tell you what she did. Maybe she did. Maybe we should look at it uh, through a different prism, and it's this. Uh, since we're talking about the Powerball, what did we buy ourselves? If For those of us that bought tickets, we're not buying a real chance to win the Powerball. No, we're, we're not going to win few, the Powerball. We're buying a fantasy. We're buying a fantasy. Wasn't she buying herself a fantasy? She was taking money. This old lady didn't have anything else going on. She probably wasn't going to spend all this dough anyway. It's probably true. She's going down there and putting it down, and she has this illusion that God is communicating with her. She's helping out the Bank of Heaven and probably just fell asleep, you know, with warm, lovely dreams in her head. That's very true. Her son doesn't call often enough, so right? screw him. Yeah. I'll put the money in God's <laughs> church. Yeah. That's the lesson. And always call mom. Yeah, and always get power right. of attorney over mom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's another good point. Yeah. Um, uh, also, other news out of Southern California. It's a it's a it's a SoCal day here on the KQ Morning Show. <laughs> uh, watch out for Dragon Balls. Just just do yourself a favor. Watch out for spicy Dragon Balls. I'm not I'm not talking about. Uh, this is not a, a Game of Thrones reference. This is not a Welsh flag reference. No. Uh, Spicy Dragon Balls are something that was offered on a menu at a Thai restaurant. This is a true story. A woman ordered the, again, spicy Dragon Balls as an appetizer and said the food was so spicy that it burned her. Mm. She says she suffered chemical burns to her vocal cords, mm. esophagus, and the inside of her right nostril. <laughs> was she snorting it? I guess. She says her throat and voice have incurred permanent injuries and will forever be damaged. Whoa. Uh, which reminds me, 1992, summer, in Minneapolis, I went to a Thai restaurant with a few members of my band and a couple guys in the crew. I would love to know where this was, because I can still kind of picture it, mm. and now I'm thinking it's North Loopish, maybe, but mm. I, I just have an image of a, of a neighborhood. There were some converted factories. It was nearby. We were playing over at the... Orpheum, and it was a day. I don't know. It was so, you know, it's all sketchy. It's all weird. Now that I kind of know my way around, those memories become less clear. You know what I mean? Like a uh -huh, year yeah. ago, I would have probably known right where it was. The point is this: in a Thai restaurant with a member of the crew who'd never had Thai food, and he ordered something, and he said, oh, "I want it hot." And the guy said, "How hot do you want it?" And he said, "Give me." And they had one through five little volcanoes. He said, "Give me five volcanoes," oh, and man. we all said, "No." The guy's nickname was Doomer. We said, "No, Doomer, don't do that." <laughs> He goes, what? I, love, I I eat hot foods. I have jalapenos, just like raw. Oh, okay. I said, yeah, that's fine. That's a jalapeno. This like is a whole volcano. This is a different yeah. level. <laughs> and he goes, no. And the waiter said, sir, I really don't, you know, just so you know, that's like Thai hot is crazy hot. He goes, no, bring it. And it was turned into a, you know, now it's a, a test of manhood. He's thrown down the gauntlet to himself. And I watched a guy have one 
forkful of of some of a sauce with a chicken and vegetable on a piece on some rice, <laughs> one bite, and he chewed it and he swallowed it. And he put his face in his hands, and he literally was sweating as he turned red, oh and he and he started to choke, like he was choking, like yeah. gasping for air. And yeah. we all looked at him like, "Yeah, what did we say?" <laughs> right, Doomer, Doomer, way to go! Uh, he did not sue that particular restaurant, so uh. he did not go spicy Dragon Ball lawsuit hot. But uh, but this woman in in California has she's seeking unspecified damages. Uh, Thai chilies are spicier than cayenne peppers, but not quite as much as a habanero. But what? still, the point is, if you go for the Thai chili, you got to take it easy. And anybody that ever offers you something called spicy dragon balls, just think about it. <laughs> I don't even think about the spice. Think about this. What if you happen to choke? What if the what if your epitaph was well he choked on those spicy dragon, dragon balls. balls? What if that's what we talk about for the rest of all time? Just avoid dragon balls. Is my point. Forever your death will involve Snickers. Exactly. Just people snickering. Yeah. And I'm guessing she did she receive medical attention? Did it say because no? Well, no, not not at the time. No, not at the time. Okay. Yeah. Um, Couldn't handle her spicy dragon balls. Mama Cass. For years, people say Mama Cass from the Mamas and the Papas died yeah. because she choked on a ham sandwich. Not yeah. true. But but once someone said it. It just that's what people think. That's mm-hmm. not what led to her death. But if you choke on spicy dragon balls, I'm just telling you right now, uh, we're going to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like uh it's like I someone always told me once, um oh wait, I'm getting so many lines of of thought confused in my head, but there was what's the so, I feel like if my mom said this or someone told her, but it was always like you always make you you make sure you, you have to think about when you're what you're wearing out what if you have to be what if you're in a car accident and the paramedics come what you know what are you going to be wearing when you can't cover Damn. yourself there's mm-hmm. like something about my mom told me two things once that really freaked me out one was never write anything down that you wouldn't want read in church and okay. i was like what, what what would that be but then of course then one day i'm caught at school writing a note uh, you know, some naughty note about something at school. And and then I'm like, I hear her voice in my head. Would you want this read in church, Stephen? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, I got to tear this into 1,000 pieces. And the other one was something about make sure you're wearing clean underwear in case the paramedics. Yes. Mm-hmm. I, it was one of those. I don't right. know. Right. It's, a, it's amazing what sticks in your brain. That it, When you hear it, you think that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But then it's, it's in there forever. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was my mom would say that, too. I think it was a mom thing of that generation. That if you're in a cup, always put on clean underwear. You don't know if you'll be in a car accident. Yeah, right. Well, There's well, the some weird connection. Enough, the underwear is not going to be clean anyway, Mom, yeah. but I don't know. It's uh, Always some kind of a connection. Oh, ter- well, yeah. sorry. One more related food note I do want to share. Let's move away from spicy Dragon Balls. Okay. How about this? A study at the University of Warwick in England, 12,000 people kept food diaries while also tracking their own mental health. Long story short, every serving of fruit and vegetables you have every day boosts your happiness. Hmm. The mm. more fruits and vegetables you eat, the happier you get. And it it goes through the day up until the eighth serving, and then you've plateaued. <laughs> but every time you have a fruit or vegetable, a serving of fruit or vegetable, it boosts your mood, gives you a little shot of serotonin. It, your, your subconscious knows you're eating healthy, and it makes you happier. And getting in touch with the earth. I, I, I while that. getting in touch with the earth. And I'm going to think friends. about that this morning while I eat a breakfast burrito. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I was like, oh, man, why, why can I get work in some fruit? Sponsored by the Fruit and Vegetable Association of America, by <laughs> the way, exactly that survey. Right. Nice try. I'd be so much happier if I were just eating broccoli. But no, I'm going breakfast burrito yet again. <laughs> right, exactly. I want to be unhappy on the inside. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. But it's Thursday, July 20th. Friday, July 21st, you know what's going down. KQRS is Rock the Boat 80s Party, which is sold out. You cannot buy tickets, but you can win tickets. And we're about to give a couple away right now, baby. We got a couple people on hold ready to compete, and they're going to play a very special game this morning. One of my personal favorites. Tony? It is special. I, I don't blame you for having it as one of your personal favorites. Yep. As Uncle Stevie said, tomorrow the 92 KKRS 80s boat cruise sold out, but not for a lucky winner of today's silly battle. Advertising or advertising today focuses appropriately on 1980s advertising slogans. We'll read them 
You tell us, are they the real ones from the 1980s, or are they made-up fakey ones, real or not real? Let's play! Yes! Oh my Woo! God. Advertising or advertising. Oh, it's a staple. Candace, who is caller contestant number one? Jimmy from St. Paul. Jimmy! Good morning, Jimmy. Hey, good morning, Krug. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, indeed. All right, okay. All night, all day. Jimmy is ready to rock. Uh, Tony is going to give you some slogans and tell us if they are advertising or advertising, true or false, real or not. You ready, Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing Jimmy is ready to go. Okay, these from the 1980s or not. Paul Masson, we will sell no wine before it's time. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I that is Orson true. Welles delivery. Yeah. Wow. We will sell no wine before it's time. That was Orson Welles. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right Jim on. Jimmy, you're one for one, brother. Jimmy, uh, toys right. are us. Toys are us. I don't want to grow up. That sounds like something toys are us. I don't want to grow up. I'm a toys are us kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy is Woo. enthusiastic. All right, number three, Keebler EL fudge cookies. Elf tossing is offensive, but eating them is fine. Elf tossing is offensive? <laughs> is that real or not? Eating them is fine. <laughs> oh, man. You got me on this one. Is it a real slogan or not? Oh. Yikes. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I to, you're teasing. I should have known. Yeah. yeah, that Tony. He's a scamp. I'm teasing Jimmy. <laughs> All right. Next up for you, Mr. Big League Chew Bubblegum. Periodontal disease never tasted so good. <laughs> no. True, false. false. <laughs> true, false. It's correct. No, true, false means no. It is not true. That's right. You're right. Oh. You're three for four, brother. Jimmy, Pantene Shampoo, don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Yes, Johnny. Yes. Absolutely. Don't hate me, Jimmy. And lastly, Teddy Ruxpin, the lovable talking bear that looks like you'll be murdered in your sleep. Logan, what was this, Logan? <laughs> Teddy Ruxpin, the lovable talking bear that looks like you'll be murdered in your sleep, yes or no? <laughs> You're teasing on that one. No. <laughs> yes. You're just teasing. Yeah. Teasing. Damn straight, teasing. Jimmy. Five right. for six, brother. Nice. Well played. Nice. Man, that is great work, Jimmy. Uh, you are clearly uh, hip to advertising or advertising. We're going to put you on hold for a minute. We'll see what the competition has uh, cooking. Candace, who is contestant number two? Joe from Rice Lake, Wisconsin. Joe, good morning. Good morning. Are you ready for a little advertising or advertising? I am. All right, Jimmy went five for six, so your work is cut out for you, sir. <laughs> Tough to beat. Let's do it, Tony. All right, Buster, here's your six. Number one, Wendy's, where's the beef? True. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. sure. Next up, Smith Barney, they make money the old-fashioned way. They earn it. Right. Yes. John Houseman. You can just see the patches on the mm -hmm. jackets, on the blazers, on those elbows. The pipe pipe smoke. It. Nice wood, like wood lined library. <laughs> Next up, sir, Trivial Pursuit. Pre read the cards and become an intellectual fraud. <laughs> False. I'm teasing. It's a pretty good one, though. Atari, how teens kill time in between masturbating. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay first of all true but yes. a false, false. slogan right. yeah. it's it's one of the it's one of the rare true and false yeah. statements <laughs> two more for you federal express when it absolutely positively has to be there overnight true mm -hmm. wow joe is joe is five for six this is a. Uh, Whoo, baby! This is the the heat of competition. Is is I, I feel like I'm about to get the vapors. Mm -hmm. Here it comes, Joe. This is uh this is for all the marbles. Take a big swing here, Joe. Kellogg's Cracklin' Oat Brand. Have a bowl, then hit the bowl. <laughs> uh, false. 
Oh, oh man. <laughs> Smoke a bowl, have a bowl, and hit yes. the bowl. I think yeah. that's it. You forgot it. Right. Smoke and Joe went six for six, I wow. believe. Yeah. We have got a winner. Joe, well played, wow. sir. <laughs> Thank you. Man, so you've just won two tickets to the 92 KQRS Rock the Boat 80s party. Again, that's tomorrow night with Paddlefield Riverboats. That's going to be a blast. And Jimmy, my God, five for six and a, just a barrel of laughs. Thank you for your uh, excitement mm -hmm. and energy, sir. You are not leaving empty-handed. You've got tickets to see Tom Kiefer from the band Cinderella oh, with L.A. Guns. It's never enough. Still one of my favorite 80s rock tracks. Saturday at the Medina Entertainment Center. Congrats to both of you. Guys, hats off. Yeah. Enjoy it, Joe. Enjoy it, gentlemen. Uh, Candace will take your info off air. And that, boy, that Jimmy, I was... Yeah. I, nothing against Joe. Just mm. just rocked the no, game. And, and I look forward to meeting yeah. tomorrow. But, boy, Jimmy was a, right. that was a character right there. I Joe. like teasing him. Sounds like Joe sounds like the kind of guy that wouldn't say something dumb in the emergency room or the delivery room. I'm sorry. No, but no, Jimmy, not a chance. But Jimmy, it could happen. It could happen. Jimmy sounds to me like a man we would call him filter free. Yeah, <laughs> he was just shooting from the hip. Yeah. Boy, that was bottom. great. That was fun. Man, uh, if you're just joining us, what Zepp was referencing was the fact that we've discussed a lot of things that men have said in delivery rooms, all of them really stupid, all of them really, really bad. Uh, no shortage of women have been a part of the show today sharing almost across the almost almost to a one saying, well, my ex, my former husband, yeah. because, you know, there's a moment when you are literally giving new life a chance uh, mm. and you hear something come out of the mouth of your significant other where you realize, I okay, baby's mm -hmm. good, we're out of here. <laughs> you and me, kid, let's do it. It is a character revealer. Pretty much. Uh, I, my wife and I, went, uh, when, when uh, our son was coming, she had a long labor. It was a very difficult labor. And we had purchased a bottle of champagne. To just have a little toast to thinking mm -hmm. after the baby's born, we'll have a sip. It'll be a great moment. And boy, that champagne, it was it, it, it started off on ice. And then eventually it's just sitting in room temperature water all these hours <laughs> later. And we're still waiting. And then there was that moment when it, at one point in the delivery room, there's a lot of uh, people, there's there's furniture, there's different things. And then throughout the course of the day, we're hearing other crying babies from the other rooms on the floor mm -hmm. and then like every few minutes the nurse is going to go I i'm just gonna take this chair and they're like removing furniture from the room because <laughs> they're in rooms where there's other people celebrating babies yeah. and it was such a dark and sad it just got kind of sad and scary and everything was fine everybody worked out everybody was healthy but throughout the course of that day i can tell you this i did think several times i was like i know something i should say that'll lighten the mood and then I, but then I overruled myself because I realized there's not a joke I could possibly conjure right. that won't fall flat uh -huh. Uh -huh. in this really deflated moment in time. I know the room, but I, but but I did, but I, but I still I couldn't help myself from trying to find something funny yeah. to say. Right, and I was just, thankfully I was probably too tired to. It, it, that was a part of it too. But I was like, I just need to shut up and just continue to be on call for whatever needs to happen in a moment no room for creative thinking you know no. sometimes just yeah, got to keep it simple you know focus on the the task at hand for her crystal wrote one in kq morning show at 92 kqrs.com hope you get your phone back she left her phone behind today good luck crystal but then sat down i'm going to paraphrase but she's in a hard labor a lot of pain had a broken back six years earlier that's just really bothering her Oof. uh during yeah she's just an excruciating pain as you might imagine she looks over at the father and he stated my stomach hurts i think i could barely look at him the rest oh of my, my labor God. she said and then his entire family showed up mom dad sister cousins aunts uncles my family knew at this point that is not where everyone should be. But she had two people in her family in there, her mom and her sister. And then uh, she yeah, eventually had to kick everyone out because he wouldn't kick everyone out. After 16 hours of labor, being up for over 48 hours, right after he went to uh, the bathroom, our daughter for the, uh, bathed our daughter for the first time and didn't come back for two hours because he went to the bar next to the hospital oh, with man. his dad to celebrate. Worst, happiest day of my life ever. I butchered that a bit, Crystal, but oh, I think no. we get the gist of it. Yeah. We got the point. Yeah. 
I was I was fortunate looking back. I do have uh, five older brothers, four of whom were already dads at this time. And and all four of them in their own way said essentially to me before, you need to get your head around the fact that you don't matter at all for the next few months. Yeah. You got that? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And they're like, "Your Rosemary's going to take care of the baby. You take care of Rosemary. So when people are trying to stop by, you tell them no. Get out of here. We don't want strangers <laughs> around the baby. Whatever happens in those first few weeks, you just you just handle it, man. Like you don't that you do not matter. That's the only way through this. And it was great advice because when it was happening, I did it did make perfect sense to me. It's like, wait, all I did was get up and you know, I got dressed and went to the hospital. I didn't do any of the work. There was mm-hmm. nothing about this. Yeah, I was a little tired after 30 hours, <laughs> and I, I, I could have used a nap. But again, no physical pain. No, I hadn't just spent nine and a half, ten months with my body going berserk without me. You know, like I didn't turn into a factory all of a sudden. I wasn't creating anything. And uh, boy, I, I'm really glad because, again, Having had that impulse to say something funny or try to come yeah. up with a joke, I heard my older brothers going, just, you don't matter. No mm-hmm. one cares. No Zip one cares it. what you think. No one wants to hear from mm-hmm. you. You are just there to take care of the person who's taking care of the baby. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. You naturally kind of fall into that role, too. You instantly feel like the mighty guard dog. Oh, 100%. I got, mm-hmm. in fact, I was, I, you know, as a, as a new dad with a baby and a Bjorn or a stroller, I got, I had to be talked down a couple times. I got really Papa Bearish, like a car would not really come to a stop sign as I was trying to cross the street. And instead of like, oh no, make sure the baby's okay. I turn it into, hey, right. why, why are you trying? You know, I was like starting fights, yeah. you know, like uh-huh. uh, there's a child strapped to your chest. Maybe not a great time to start a fight mm-hmm. with, a, with a van driver in Brooklyn. I was a little out of my head. Yeah, I was, uh, I went from old lead foot in the neighborhood to the guy stopping traffic in the neighborhood going, yeah. do you see that there are kids that live here? Yep. Do you see that pink Jeep over there? What if you crushed into that going 45? in this point yeah you know maybe that's where dad comes in and also don't try to be too helpful right i mean we've all seen those we get in there i know they're supposed to breathe Mm -hmm. and we've rehearsed some stuff together and you really just want to support her the moment she deviates from that you deviate from that yeah no you're just following following their lead yeah try and push through those you know (laughs) I yeah. know it hurts. Don't say that either. Once I see we, a lot of women on the KQ Facebook yeah, page man. when you go, I know it hurts, but no, don't don't say you know it hurts. I don't think we know. Oh God, no! <laughs> There's no way to know. Are I, you kidding? I, I I wake up some nights in the middle of the night because I have like a gas bubble, and I'm like, I can't. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Oh. I'm like, oh, just keep it to yourself. Calf cramped up last night while I was sleeping. The worst. Dude. I had a Charlie horse really last labor. week. Yeah. I had a calf Charlie horse last yeah. week. Woke up in the middle of the night. <laughs> And I looked at my wife and I said, you don't know pain. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Until you've had a Charlie horse. That's exactly right. Of course. And then she, of course, wants to rip you from your sack to your hole. Sure. Say, how's that feel? Yeah. That's well, pain. That's right pain. Right there, brother. Keep them coming on the Maple Grove Lock and Safe Talk and Text Line. We've got a new crew here. Let's hear those dumbasses in the delivery room stories. What'd he do? What'd he say? 651-989-ROCK. Guys, it's okay to out yourselves. Plenty of fellas have this morning. And we have the KQRS Facebook post. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. Zip, Tony, Candace, and Steve Gorman are the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. It's Thursday, July the 20th. Good morning, If you did not buy a Powerball ticket at a convenience store in downtown Los Angeles, you are not sitting on a billion-dollar win. Someone is. Someone will come forward hopefully soon enough and say, hey, guys on the KQ Morning Show, can I send you some millions of dollars? But until that happens, we're just going to sit here and and hope for it. Uh, Yeah, so anyway, that billion dollars, not a Minnesota, not a Wisconsin, a California ticket. People on Twitter are saying, this is rigged. This is the second billion dollar win in California in the last year. Yeah. And I don't know why I'm doing my Lars Ulrich imitation all of a sudden. (laughs) That's two tickets in California in the same year, and we played rock faster than anyone else. It's pretty good. (laughs) Not bad, not bad. Wow, I didn't know I had that in me. I don't know where it came from. Remember that. Yeah, please do. I guess that's just because Lars Ulrich's a billionaire. Um, so, uh, but but here's the deal: if if you uh, if you were buying Powerball tickets, you still might have won something. I mean, there's always somebody winning five, ten, twenty bucks here. Uh, and if you do come up with a little extra money, sometimes you look around, and you think, "I got to do something with this money. Mm-hmm. I don't want to spend it. I'm going to invest it." And uh, 
Here's a story about some people who made some investments and it didn't go well. <laughs> and then they took a script from a bad movie and decided to do something about it. Okay, here's <laughs> I, I'm just trying to make this as simple as I can. A crazy story from Toronto. There was a kid who called himself, he was the self-proclaimed, that's what that means, Crypto King. First warning flag. Yeah, Aiden Platerski is his name, and he was the <laughs> Crypto King of Toronto. Platerski. Freaking Platerski. <laughs> My name's Aiden Platerski, and I know how to make your money, make more money on crypto. And there's a key, and it's not real cash, but it's worth more. He's one of those guys. Mm. Well, uh, he's one of those guys who got people to give him upwards of $40 million to invest in in cryptocurrency and general foreign exchange, uh, a lot of that money went south, as in it all disappeared. And the crypto king was suddenly left to tell all of his investors, sorry, I don't have your money. <laughs> well, a group of these investors decided that's not good enough. They kidnapped him. They held him hostage. <laughs> They shot a video of him apologizing and explaining that he had done this. They beat him up first. There's a, literally a hostage video. This sounds like um, this sounds like a thriller starring Kiefer Sutherland right? on NBC Sunday nights. <laughs> <laughs> who kidnapped the crypto king and beat him up and made him apologize. But they literally posted a video on YouTube of this kid. He's 24 and he's in a hood. He's got black eyes and he's saying to the world, like, I did this and I shouldn't have done it. And it's just the most bizarre thing because anytime we feel wronged, we probably all yeah. have these revenge fantasies. Like right. I'd tie that guy to a post in a barn and make him eat hay and goat feces or something. Who knows what yeah. goes through your mind? Uh, but but these guys actually did it. They found him, they kidnapped him, and they got away with it. This all happened like eight months ago. They're just now making arrests. They didn't fully get away with it, but yeah. for a while, they were in the clear. Platerski, this is the video they shot. This is him in his own words being coerced. I'm sorry. I really am. I didn't want to. I didn't mean to ruin anybody's life. When the money was coming in, I was feeling to tell people that I'd lost a lot of it which caused me to use more leverage in the crypto market, which caused me to lose more and more and more. Mm -hmm. oh, there's, a, there's a little mm -hmm. clip of the video right there. Uh, Platerski did admit so far uh, with his attorney that, yeah, some of it might be accurate, but they beat me up to get me to <laughs> yeah. say it. Um, here's the thing. You don't get any payback on that. You know, if you're in the mob or you're a cartel and he lost a bunch of your money, I, we just don't hear from him again, right? right. He did, the crypto king yeah. is gone. And then start the conspiracy theories. Or perhaps you kidnap him to get your money back. But they that wasn't possible. That wasn't an option. These kidnappers just wanted to make the video. So now you're going to do some time on a kidnapping and assault charge. Right. And you didn't even get your money back. These nerds just don't know how it works. That's Yeah, this truly is. You said it earlier. This is a true life revenge of the nerds. That's what it is. <laughs> Everybody involved in this. First of all, I, I'm just picturing that they, they, they get him. They nab him. They probably picked him up at some... I mean, where where did they find him? He, was, he had his matcha latte. He's yeah. walking down the street. They grab him. Uh, they put him in a room. And then they're like, okay, let's beat him up. Okay, go. <laughs> what do you mean me? Well, I don't know how to beat him up. I don't know how to beat somebody up. No, punch him. Punch him with what? <laughs> My hand, I have a bad wrist. You know that carpal tunnel from being on the computer all the time. Do you have Maybe any? Give him a wedgie. That's what they did to us in school. Let's take some of those. Uh, get take the batteries out of your uh, your Wii remote and put them in a sock and hit him in the face with the sock. I mean, they, they don't know how to beat somebody up. Yeah, let's watch some self defense videos. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we if we hit him in the face with a sock full of batteries and Make him say something. That'll be funny. <laughs> oh, those crypto nerds. <laughs> guys, 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 to Zepp's point, if you're going to go through with the kidnapping, you can't let the guy walk out. I'm sorry, man. That's You're, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. They're going to find you. You're nerds. At least do it in some... I, don't, I forgot how they did it in Revenge of the Nerds, the movie. It's been too long, but it was devilishly clever. It was something you outsmarted the jocks. Sure it was. You don't take a page out of their book and... Start beating them, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I think about all those crazy I think about kids. Revenge of the Nerds. I think about like one of the first scenes of the movie is the guys. Uh, the, the one of the main characters is on his way to college. His dad's driving, mm -hmm. and as they're driving, cars are passing them and honking nonstop. And he goes, Dad, is everything okay? And he goes, Got the cruise control set at thirty five, son. Everything's great. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember watching Revenge of the Nerds in the theater, thinking this is not supposed to be funny, but I'm laughing at every line of this movie. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs>
that, uh, if that came out today, the 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 younger oh. kids they wouldn't know what to make of it. No, they would no. say you guys were terrible, and I'd say we sure were. It was funny. <laughs> yeah, those were good times. Uh, speaking of terrible good times, there was a bit of a pileup on a highway in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, there was a slippery slope, slippery surface on on uh, on Interstate 95. That's a major thoroughfare. Mm-hmm. The the Northeast Corridor, like from D.C. all the way to Boston on I-95, it's never not full of vehicles. It's always a traffic jam. It's always an accident waiting to happen. But in Bridgeport, Connecticut, Connecticut, the afterthought between Boston and New York, um, an awful lot of cars spun out shortly after 11 p.m. The problem was, oh, it started with a motorcycle. This is scary. Lost control, fell onto the road. He had minor injuries. Other vehicles trying to avoid him all spilled out. This was not black ice. It's July. It was, oh, let's see here, do, 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 human waste. Ah. Hmm. Human waste leaking from a tractor trailer. Oh, what's oh, worse God. than laying your bike down, laying it down in poop? Yeah, oh. uh, although the poop maybe is what helped the guy slide. He, yeah. You know, it probably probably kept some of the injuries from being more serious. Right. Sounds fun, like a, a water slide. Whee! Kind of. slide. Kind of like that. A tractor trailer was in several trucks involved, several cars, a big pileup, 10 vehicles all told. Northbound lanes were clean for several hours. Northbound lanes were closed, I should say, for several hours during the cleanup. Uh, the company has not issued a statement yet, but basically what you've got is you've got a giant tractor trailer that I guess, what are they, cleaning out septic tanks? They're just, they got a huge, yeah, like just that. a giant vat of poo, and uh, <laughs> and they were leaking all over the highway. What? what? What does it say about the world when that's even a possibility, much less a reality? Right. Well, that's up there in the Northeast. We had a story... I don't know if this is one of those deals, but they they truck, or in this case, uh, put poop in those, uh, you know, what am I talking about? It's a train, you know, in those big tanker trucks on the train that you see. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, up in the northeast, and they get them out of there. They take them down to the southeast, down to, I don't know, Tennessee or Kentucky somewhere, and they yeah. dump them. And they're called poop trains. Yeah, I've seen that. That's right. Yeah, they'll poop train. And one of them, uh, in a, on an August day... Uh, I don't know, the engine quit working or whatever in this small town and it ended up sitting there for two weeks. And I guess those uh, those tanker trucks aren't as sealed as you might think, or those tanks on the trains, rather, and it just sat there really stinking up the town for two days. And, mm-hmm. of course, no one wanted to take the poopy train. I don't know what the I don't know what the resolution ever was, but maybe this is one of those deals. They're just trucking their poop out of the Northeast to dump it somewhere. Um. Yeah, boy. Uh, if, if, if By the time you have to come up with a plan to... You know, take your poo elsewhere. That 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 can't be the best solution. Too many people it just in can't one be. spot. Yeah, we're we got to get this poop out of here. You know what? I, we've got all these billionaires launching rockets into space. Why don't yeah. we? Why don't we just blast poo into space? Yeah, but you got to blast it past just, the orbit. Just, just, just not bring it back. It's, yeah, it's coming back. Yeah, no, but. just shoot it far up there. Take out. You know, the, between yeah. that, between that, and all the plastic in the oceans, can't we just send it all to space? Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, what about the moon? Let's be honest. We're, sure. We really. I mean, I know they're going to go up and build a space station. Nobody wants to settle on the moon. Look at it. It's worse than any piece of property we have on planet earth it's just it's crap let's just send all of our crap up there turn it into a big you know, I don't know big, well now uh, if landfill. we start if we start weighing down the moon with landfills is that going to mess with the tides if the moon oh. gets if the moon gets out of balance yeah i don't see i'm not i'm not a forward thinker like that yeah, i'm just part I, of the problem i think what we do is we just send all of these rockets straight towards the sun just put them on a <laughs> one one you know it, it would take a few years but eventually they'll just melt it might be cost prohibitive i don't know to send our poop 90 million miles but maybe you know in the future when this stuff you know that's probably what we'll be doing just trucking it out there I got a buddy uh, in Woodstock, New York. She's a volunteer fireman. She's a she calls herself a fireman. It's a she. Her name's Karen. She's a great gal, uh, and uh, and I learned a lot about uh, what it is to be a firefighter just mm-hmm. in having conversations with her. She just volunteered in her forties. Like I'm just going to do this, and it's a great thing, and she loves it. Uh, unlike a woman in Florida who was arrested after stealing a fire truck. Check this <laughs> out. Stole a fire truck last sun- Saturday. First of all, who steals a fire truck? How do you? Uh, I, that takes some that takes some uh, alcohol chutzpah yeah. and some booze. Stole a fire truck. For some reason, the fire chief had let her spend the night at the station. For some reason? This is the story. Um, mm. But in the morning, she woke up and said, screw it. I'm getting out of here, and I'm taking that fire truck with me. <laughs> uh, she just drove off in a fire truck, which was low on fuel. It eventually ran out of gas. The police showed up. 
The cop showed up to say what's going on. She didn't want him to be suspicious, so she said, I'm a volunteer firefighter. I'm out on the job. I'm just doing this. Uh, something was amiss. He looked into it. Didn't see her name on the fire department's roster. She's been arrested and charged with grand theft, fraud, and, quote, impersonating a firefighter. Hmm. Wow. It's unclear why she took the truck. Okay, let's go back to this. She spent the night in the fire station. Yeah, that's uh, that's why you get them an Uber or drive them yourself. Yeah. Otherwise, the, the, they steal your truck. Dude, with, with probably with good reason. Yeah, right, uh, exactly. There, there's a whole, this is an entire lifetime movie unfolding right in front of us. <laughs> you know, it's like you, you, you're you in the literal and figurative firehouse when you bring her home with uh, you. She hasn't thrown them under the fire truck yet, though, right? She's... Candace Wheeler, question for you. Yes. Uh, have you ever stolen a vehicle? Um, no, but I'm fantasizing about doing this. Yeah, I can uh, tell. You, I, mm. guess, I can hear you over there going like, oh, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm, mm. <laughs> would you go for the hook and ladder, or would you just go for the smaller? Like, would you go for the biggest fire truck you could find, or would you go for oh, something? Oh, yeah, bigger yeah. the better. Oh, heck yeah. That'd be great. You fire just like it because there's a Dalmatian involved. So you love doggies. I uh. do, but I'm just fantasizing about, like, the hot. Big fireman chasing me down, you know. Yeah, she's not going too fast. <laughs> this is where it all leads. <laughs> One of the worst getaways ever. She just went a block, whipped off her clothes, and put it in park. Yeah, you um, you really you, you gotta you gotta have a real plan if you are going to try to get away with a fire vehicle. They they look out for those. They want them back, and they're big and they're red. I know it's a stereotype that firefighters are hot. Um, but I have to say, the Minneapolis Fire Department, Northeast especially, whew, I saw them the other day. Really? Driving around. Yeah, they're just driving around. They're chilling. just around. driving around doing push-ups and stuff? <laughs> yeah, yeah, making calendars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotcha. Hell yeah. Oh, don't forget to put my shirt on today. Yeah, there is there is something to be said for, for people who just go, um, oh, yeah, by the way, I'll save you. If something's on fire, I'll run in there. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty awesome, truly. I bet they wouldn't say anything stupid in the delivery room. Not a firefighter. Never. 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 They'd be like, I know exactly what to do and how to do it. We're going to get <laughs> this baby out in no time flat. I do. I still like this dumbasses in the delivery room. I was it's on great. the KQ Facebook page. We'll take some more calls here. You had a 930-651-989-ROCK. What did he do? What did he say in the delivery room that was particularly stupid? Share it with us, please. 651-989-ROCK. Hang tight. It's the KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS. I'm Steve Gorman. This is the KQ Morning Show. And this show, the KQ Morning Show, is hitting the road for a long weekend. KQ Up North with BigDeck.com, October 5th through the 8th at Cragen's Resort on Gull Lake. You can join us for a broadcast of the KQ Morning Show for a karaoke party, a happy hour boat cruise, and live music. Book your stay now. Go to 92KQRS.com, sponsored by BigDeck.com and Cragen's Resort on Gold Lake. We are going to have an absolute blast, and you should join us. Now, a lot of men decide that they want to join their wife in the delivery room, and a lot of men really probably should have rethought that. Actually, it's a good idea to be there. It's a better idea to be there and keep your mouth shut. We've been hearing yeah. all morning about insane things that guys have said at the ultimate moment of truth. We just had a woman call in, and she didn't stay to want to talk on the air, but she shared a story with, uh, my, my, with Candace and myself. She delivered a baby boy on her husband's birthday. And after the delivery, her husband said, what'd you get me for my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, guys, literally the lesson of the day is just shut up. Just one, yeah. one, once, once labor begins, you don't matter for a long yeah. time. And our jokes just don't, I mean, even the good no. ones, no, you know, they no. just don't stick. Here's Jason on the Facebook page. Baby number one, wife is needing oxygen. They put the mask on her. I couldn't resist and asked her to say, Luke, I am your father. Oh, Both the nurse man. and the wife gave me the daggers. Here's yeah. Nicole, my ex-husband. Ex-husband read Harry Potter the entire 36 hours I was in labor. The third baby, he slept the entire 10 hours she Whoa. was in labor. Yeah, just slept it off. Wake me when the kid comes. I guess that's, I guess that's uh, you know, sometimes, I, you know, in moments of incredible stress in my life, I start to yawn. I, like, I, you know, mm -hmm. my brain gets overwhelmed. And I literally want to take a nap. Maybe that was what was going on for 10 hours. Jeez. No, maybe not. Maybe someone was just drunk. Yeah. <laughs> how about uh, Jessica's husband? Um, he asked how I was feeling. He said, for some reason, it burns. It burns bad. And he starts singing 
Johnny Cash, Burning Ring of Fire. Okay, you know, um, maybe they had it right in the old days when the men just went to the yeah, bar. And the not, bar. Not, not because we don't need to be supportive, but because mm. we, we aren't smart enough not to make it worse. Yeah. Tara's husband said, with all that moaning, you're making me horny. <laughs> oh, my oh, you God. Dinks. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's it's an yeah. endless cavalcade of in, of of just idiocy on the show this morning. Candace, do we have a caller? Yes. Uh, yes. Have... <laughs> Rick from Spring Lake Park. Rick, good morning, sir. Rick, are you with us? Ricky, is your Rick, wife in labor now? Or... Let's hope he's in the delivery room now. I'm calling he's... the KQ Morning Show. Maybe he called to say, I gave my wife the silent treatment when she was <laughs> delivering. How do you guys like it? <laughs> yeah. All right, let's, let's Rick, move on good morning. Uh, good morning. Can uh, you hear me? Yes, sir. What do you got for us? Well, um, two days shy of my, my birthday, uh, we were in with our second child, and I asked the doctor if we could throw some duct tape on that for a couple of days so she could be born on my birthday. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was the only one that thought it was funny. But yeah. <laughs> Not, so no, no one high-fived you yeah. and, and said, man, you got any others up there? No, just the eyebrows that went up in the air. Yeah. Looking at me like, what in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and how long so. ago was that, Rick? Well, she's 26 now. My daughter is. Okay. So that was quite a, quite a long time ago. Yeah, that's not one anyone ever forgets, is it? Nope. Yep. <laughs> I, I laugh about it every time I tell it. Hey. <laughs> well, you know, as long as someone dug it, you know, that's that's not bad. Rick, thanks for holding on for us and uh, appreciate you sharing that story. Yeah, have a great day, guys. See ya. Yeah, bye. <laughs> I, I I can't decide which I like more when the the the, the wives who've called in to mostly say my yeah. former husband, or the guys themselves just coming clean, just saying, "Yep, it happened." What are you yeah. going to do? But Jeff us. from Anelka does that on a text. He said, "I bought a case of beer in the hospital to celebrate my daughter's arrival on January 14, two thousand one, the same day." As the Vikings lost the Giants, forty-one donut had a buddy come up and drink beer with me. What a dem- What a dumbass! Yes, I'm remarried now. Oh my gosh! All right, Jeff. Who, baby? I remember that game. I remember uh-huh. that 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 was the uh, that was the last ever Robert Smith game with the Vikings. Oh, that was bad. Yeah, yeah that was tough. How about uh, Nicole's hubby who said, "It's a boy, it's a boy," and the nurse said, "Look again, that's the umbilical cord." <laughs> It was well, a girl. That, okay, that's but that's uh, yeah, that's that's, a, that's an honest yeah, mistake. Yeah, exactly. It's a slinky. Yeah, you're just trying to project your. Uh, sure. You're trying to avoid your greatest fear, <laughs> which is that you're going to be responsible for a little girl that you're going to have mm. to get to know and and actually talk to. <laughs> right. I just want to teach you to hit a baseball. No. <laughs> How about if the doctor gets involved? Brenda, husband says, "Are you going to seduce my wife?" Doctor says, "Not in her current condition." What? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> that happened. Brenda said, her husband said, are you going to seduce my wife? The doctor said, not in her current condition. Uh, Brenda, you had you could have thrown two two right hooks at <laughs> right. that moment, and they both would have been appropriate. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Holy <laughs> sm- What is it about? What is it about? Me- well, literally, what's wrong with us? How uh, about Annie's what? husband said, looks like someone <laughs> threw a grenade in a deli. Oh, oh that's for just horrible. the love of God. <sighs> Man, ladies, can I apologize on behalf of all the men in the world? <laughs> and you're creating more of us. You're giving birth to more oh, of us. That is absolutely you know, astounding. Part of the problem. Yeah. Just right when you think you've heard the worst one, then someone just comes up and just just adds on and more and more. Yeah. It's incredible. I just had two more guys call in and say they did the whole put another stitch down there comment yeah. like our earlier really? caller. Yeah. There's there's people have commented that on the page and then and then that's that's the I'm third sorry. so we three different men have called in to say, oh <laughs> come on fellas at least come up with your own material yeah, original material please something you know wait for the moment man I just love the nurse's response so it's not it's not her fault that your penis I can't even say it penis is so small right. <laughs> penis right. you, it sounds like you could <laughs> say it Candace. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I didn't bring a case of beer to the room, but I did. So I mentioned earlier, my wife and I had a bottle of champagne, which we never got around to using because by the time our son was uh, delivered, uh, it, it was room temperature and there was no, there was not an ounce of festivity in the vibe. It was just, uh, my wife was exhausted and it was a brutal situation and everybody's okay, but it was, it was, it was, it was scary at the time. But hours later, when we finally got into a room, like just into the actual hospital room where we were going to spend the night and the next day. 
uh, in between my wife falling asleep and then she kind of like up, will open her eye, look at me, and I'm like, "That's cool. He's, he's asleep. I'm asleep. I'm sitting here. You're asleep." And she goes, "Babe, you need to go get something to eat, or just go get. You know, you know, I'm fine. The nurses are in here every five minutes anyway. That's the other thing. They wouldn't let her sleep. Every time she'd fall asleep, they'd come right in. We got to do another check of her heart rate or whatever. You know, post surgery and everything. So she said, "Just go get something. Just get out of here." And I went down, and I, this is at St. Vincent's Hospital on the uh, in the West Village in New York City. Walk down, and there's just like a ton of sirens at that particular moment. You know, like cop cars and ambulances racing by, and I'm like, oh, my God, it's just so loud. And it's only like 7.30 p.m., but we've been up since the day before, the afternoon before. And I walked into a little corner store. And I'm like, I'm like, maybe I'll just get a bagel or something. And you know what I bought? Just mm. a giant silver can of Sapporo beer. That's all I, I was like, <laughs> okay. no, I think I'll just drink that big Sapporo. And I yeah. took it and I walked it back up to the hospital. I sat in the room and I drank that beer and just was like, so this is fatherhood. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. First then, beer is a dad. That was it. The first one. And I, and I, I knocked it down and then I just passed out like a absolute zombie for a good couple hours. Oh, that's nice. It was uh, it was quite a day, uh, quite a day, quite a night, quite another day, and then quite a night. Yeah, go no. figure. Yeah, our, our first one, long one, twenty one hours of labor before they decided to go with the C section. Yeah, and yeah. yeah I had, I didn't oh, say man. anything, but I tried to have a little bag of Doritos. I tried to sneak a snack in there. Twenty one hours, I was feeling it. <laughs> sure. And just the crinkle of the bag it just got the eyes. But I had already opened the Oof. bag, so I did set it down. I was like, oh, sorry, sorry, because the she was in some intense uh, uh, contractions. Sure. And I guess the noise just I don't know interrupted her focus. It wasn't for me to question. Mm -hmm. But I did then try and do the old operation game where you go back in and without touching the bag no. with two fingers just to get a chip. <laughs> and then I thought, I'll suck on it till it's soft and then swallow it. Oh it was a Hall, hallway. Yeah, but hallway. I did. Well, I was trust. It was my job to sit there and go, there's another contraction coming so yeah. she could bear down. Oof. But then she heard a little crinkle Sneaking there. Sneaking a chip. <laughs> yeah, so I don't pass out from malnutrition yeah. so I can be there for her. <laughs> it's really funny. You, had, you, you, needed to, you needed to look back at your experiences as a high school chemistry student <laughs> when you're like, I'm just, you know, what Whatever class you were in in high school, and you're trying to sneak that snack, yeah. and the teacher's like you know, at the chalkboard, and you're like, I think I can get this, I can get this Nipchi cracker yeah. out of the six pack right now. <laughs> I know, I did. There was one, the, the stupid thing I would have said because it crossed my mind, didn't get out my lips though, but I thought, oh, I'm just gonna, s no, I better not. Was that she wasn't dilating, and it what had been at that point like eight hours, and I mm -hmm. thought to myself, are you trying? I mean, are, are we giving nah. it the full effort here? Because, I mean, if, if you try, maybe you'll... No, that's not how that the, works. The lesson, as always, gentlemen, just just know this going in. Don't say anything. Just yeah. say yes. If it was me, I would have had sorry. the baby by now. You just know, say yes or home. sorry to yeah. everything anyone <laughs> says, asks of, or says to yeah. you. Yes, sorry. That's it. That's it. That's it. You yes. got to leave it be. All yes, right, sorry. let's look back. How about a history lesson? Did you know this? Hey, did you know this? Okay. This is interesting. This is interesting. What is it? Here's a story of two home runs in Major League Baseball history. Uh, check this out. Gaylord Perry. Remember the great pitcher, Gaylord Perry? Oh, yeah. The knuckleballer, the man who would, he had nail files, he had Vaseline. Everything. He was doctoring the ball at all toss throughout his career. When he was a rookie in 1962, he was taking batting practice. And a San Francisco Chronicle beat reporter, a guy that was with the team every day, said to the manager of the Giants, hey, man, that rookie, that Perry kid, he's going to hit some home runs for you. And the manager of the Giants, Alvin Dark, said on the record, there will be a man on the moon before Gaylord Perry hits a major league home run. Flash forward seven years, <laughs> seven years to the day, wow. July 20th, 1969, Apollo 11 lands on the moon. Neil Armstrong <laughs> walks on the moon and moments later... Gaylord Perry hits his first home run. That's a true story. They'd only put in 20 bucks on it. Absolutely incredible. 400 at-bats, no home runs. The day Neil Armstrong <laughs> walks on the moon, Gaylord Perry goes yard. Absolutely incredible. On this day in 1976, Hank Aaron hit his final home run, number 755. At that point, he was back in Milwaukee playing for the American League Brewers as a designated hitter. I saw Hank Aaron and those Brewers in 1975 play in Baltimore. 
got to see him in person once. He hit a ball to center field. As it left the bat, the whole stadium roared, and it fell about 100 feet short of the track. Oh. But for a minute there, we yep. all thought, just because the ball went up, it was, oh, my God. And he hit the ball about 240 feet. But, you know, it was exciting for a second. He knew it wasn't going. He, oh, he <laughs> didn't even move. But we were all jumping up and cheering. We were losing our minds. The KQ Morning Show. 92 KQRS.